Hello, hello. My name is uh, Jones, and uh, today we are going to look at uh, child abuse and uh, some of the signs uh, that can be used uh, to detect child abuse. Okay, so within uh, this uh, lesson, I'm going to provide guidance uh, for people working in a voluntary community and commercial organization that have child protection policies in place on how they can recognize the signs of child abuse so that they can alert the appropriate authority. Please kindly note that this lesson does not constitute legal advice but just there to help people within these voluntary organizations, nurses and other people that deal with different forms of child abuse to know more about the types of child abuse and some of the signs to detect child abuse. Abuse and neglect are forms of maltreatment of a child. Somebody may abuse or neglect a child either directly or by inflicting harm or indirectly by failing to act to prevent harm. Children may be used in a family or children may be abused in a family or in an institution or community setting. This is mostly done by those known to these children and most rarely I would say it is done by a stranger. They may be abused by an adult or may be abused by adults or they can be abused by fellow children or by a fellow child. Let, uh, there are basically five types of uh, child abuse uh, that necessarily we are going to discuss uh, within uh, uh, this uh, within this lesson. So the five types of child abuse that we are going to look at include physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, neglect, and bullying. So those are the types of child abuse and necessarily that we are going to look at. So starting with physical abuse, uh, physical abuse uh, may involve hitting, uh, shaking, throwing, or poisoning, or burning, or scolding of a child. And uh, by UN definition, a child is any person who is uh, 16 years and uh, below. So in physical abuse, we are saying if uh, you hit the child or vigorously shake the child, or throw the child poison or burn this child, then it may constitute some form of physical abuse. Okay, so other forms of physical abuse may include drowning, suffocating, or otherwise causing physical harm to child, or failing to protect a child from that harm. Physical harm may also be caused when a parent or care a taker fabricates uh, the symptoms of or deliberately induces illness uh, in a child. Okay, so that is on uh, physical abuse. Let us now look at emotional abuse. Emotional abuse um, is that the persistent emotional maltreatment of a child as such as a cause severe and a persistent adverse effect on the child's emotional development. It may involve uh, conveying to children that they are worthless or unloved, inadequate, or less valued. Okay, so they may meet uh, needs uh, of another person and the likes. So hence, uh, emotionally, they will be traumatized. So it may feature age or developmentally inappropriate expectation uh, being imposed on uh, children that may cause uh, this uh, same as emotional abuse. So these may include interactions that are beyond the child's uh, developmental capability as well as uh, overprotection and limitation of exploration and learning or preventing the child participating in normal social interaction. It may involve seeing or hearing uh, the ill treatment of uh, another child. So it may also involve a serious uh, uh, bullying, causing children frequently to feel frightened or in uh, danger or the exploitation or corruption of uh, children, hence emotionally being traumatized and causing emotional abuse. 
Some level of emotional abuse is involved in all types of maltreatment of the child, though it may occur necessarily alone. So emotional abuse, uh, necessarily we are looking at persistent emotional maltreatment of the child, uh, okay, that may cause severe or persistent adverse effects on the child's emotional development. Then uh, another type of uh, abuse uh, that we can talk about, uh, child abuse, is uh, sexual abuse. It involves uh, forcing or enticing a child or young person to take part in uh, sexual activities, including prostitution, whether or not uh, the child is aware of what is uh, happening. So this constitutes a form of sexual abuse. So sexual abuse is necessarily forcing or enticing a child in sexual activities. So the activities may involve a physical contact, including both a penetrative or non-penetrative acts, such as a kissing, touching, or fondling the child's genitals or breast, uh, vagina, or anal intercourse, or oral sex. So all these may constitute uh, sexual abuse. They may also include non-contact activities such as involving children in looking at or in the production of uh, pornography material or watching sexual activities or encouraging children to behave in a sexually inappropriate ways. So this necessarily will constitute uh, sexual abuse. So when you're talking about sexual abuse involves forcing or enticing a child or young person uh, to take part in any sexual activity that may include uh, prostitution and other things and uh, all these other items that necessarily we have all highlighted. Okay, so now let us look at another type of abuse, uh, uh, which is uh, neglect. Neglect is a persistent failure to meet the child's uh, basic physical or psychological needs. This will likely result in a serious impairment of child's health or development. Neglect may occur during pregnancy as a result of uh, maternal substance abuse. So once a child is born, a neglect uh, may involve a parent or care fa or a, the caregiver failing uh, to provide adequate food or clothing, shelter, including exclusion from home or abandonment. Failing to protect a child from physical and emotional harm or danger also constitutes neglect. Also failure to ensure adequate supervision, including the use of inadequate caretakers, may also constitute neglect. Or we can also look at failure to ensure access to appropriate medical care or treatment. So this may also be looked at as neglect. It may also include um, unresponsiveness to a child's basic emotional needs. So neglect is necessarily persistent failure to meet uh, the child's basic physical and psychological needs. Okay, so let's look at another form of uh, child abuse, okay, which is uh, bullying, okay. We've included bullying as also part of child abuse uh, because um, when uh, bullying is necessarily defined as deliberate, food, deliberate hateful behavior, usually repeated over a period of time where it is difficult for those bullied to defend themselves. So that is how bullying is uh, necessarily um, defined. When we were defining uh, child abuse, we were saying it can be done by adults, okay, it can be done by children, okay, so bullying mostly is done by fellow children, okay, to the child, but it can also be done by adults. So bullying, deliberate, hateful behavior that is repeated over a period of time and affects uh, the child's uh, uh, development, interaction, and the likes. So it can uh, take many forms, but the three main types are physical. That is hitting, kicking, or necessarily theft. Then um, there is also verbal bullying. Apart from more physical, there's verbal. These include racist slayers, or racist talk, or it can be homophobic remarks, threats, or name calling. Then um, there is emotional bullying. Emotional bullying 
may include isolating an individual from the activities and social acceptance of their peer group. Okay, so these are the main types of uh, bullying that is physical, necessarily, where you physically hit someone or kick, then verbal, it has to do with uh, the language, which is intimidating, then emotional, isolating an individual from the activities, okay, or acceptance of the, within their peer group. So the damage inflicted by bullying can frequently be underestimated. It can cause considerable distress to children to the extent that it affects their health and development. At the extreme, it can also cause them to start exhibiting a mental health problem or it may lead children to harm themselves. So all settings in which children are provided with uh, services or are living away from home should have in place rigorous enforced anti-bullying strategies. Okay, so for those that are running uh, schools for children, please, you need to take care of the bullying issue because there are some children that have stopped going to school because of bullying. They might not necessarily tell their parents that there's bullying because they fear if um, the parents necessarily doesn't follow up this nicely, they may continue uh, being bullied. So bullying is one of those uh, serious uh, forms of child abuse. Okay, now that we have appreciated the types of child abuse, let us now look at some of the signs of abuse. Recognizing child abuse is ne not necessarily easy and it is the responsibility of parents, caretakers and uh, those involved in uh, taking care of children to necessarily uh, look at some of the risk that this may involve. Okay, so you need to know that um, as a caretaker, you do not necessarily have the responsibility and duty to set out within your organization, okay, necessarily uh, what necessarily bullying necessarily is there. But it is important that you bring it forward or act upon it so that appropriate agencies can investigate and take necessary action to protect the child. Okay, so when take children to boarding schools, this time people are taking children to boarding schools as young as six months, you are taking the child to baby class or whatever, kindergarten class, you are taking the child uh, to school at uh, two years and then they are bullied from there and then necessarily what happens, they will hate school, okay, they will start having uh, certain bruises and explain, say, oh, it was an accident, oh, it was ABC, so... All these uh, things can necessarily be looked at. Otherwise, under physical abuse, there are many signs that can necessarily uh, be elicited to uh, identify uh, physical abuse. So, most children will collect cuts and bruises as part of uh, the rough and uh, tumble of uh, daily life. Injuries should always be interpreted in light of the child's medical and social history, developmental stage, and the explanation that has been given. Most accidental bruises are seen over bony parts of the body, for example, the elbows or knees, and are also often seen on the flanks of the body. Some children, however, will have bruises that is more than likely more than likely inflicted, uh, uh, but rather accidental. So important indicators of physical abuse are bruises or injuries that are either unexplained or inconsistent with the explanation that has been given. Okay, they may be visible on the soft parts of the body where accidental injuries are necessarily unlikely. Okay, so instead of seeing the injuries on elbow, knees, or chins, you start seeing injuries on the cheeks, abdomen, back, and buttocks. So these can necessarily be injuries coming from physical abuse. So a delay in seeking medical treatment when it is obviously necessary it also may also cause a concern. Although this can be more complicated with bends, as these are often delayed in presentation due to bristling taking place uh, taking place or 
taking a, a later time to show that uh, there are these bruises. So um, the normal wounds that a child may suddenly have because of accident is in bone prominences. But uh, to do with uh, physical abuse, we might see it in non-bone prominences. And the examples we have given is cheeks, abdomen, and buttocks. Okay, so some of the physical signs of abuse uh, may include unexplained bruising or marks or injuries on any part of the body. And then we can also see multiple bruises in crusters, often on the upper arm, outside of the thigh, and the legs. Other um, physical, abuse, um, uh, physical abuse signs may include uh, bends from cigarette. You see signs as if the child was being tortured with a cigarette. Okay, you can see human bite marks on the child. Okay, they can even uh, sustain uh, broken bones. Okay, or they may have multiple bends with clearly demarcated edges. Maybe they use the pressing iron and the legs. Okay, what are some of the changes in behavior that can also indicate a physical abuse? Okay, so on this one, there can be fear of parents being approached for an explanation. So this child may fear the parents because feel that the person that is physically abusing them will continue even more when they explain. Okay, the child necessarily doesn't know who to open up with. So aggressive behavior or severe temper outburst may also be some of the signs uh, that may indicate that the child is having some physical abuse. Other indicators uh, to do with the behavior include flinching when approached or touched Okay, the child is uh, somehow scared, so they are in the scared mode even when you just give necessarily home touch. They can be reluct reluctance to get changed, for example, in what weather you want to change the child's clothing and the likes, then they are reluctant because they don't want you to see uh, those marks that have been created. The child may look at the place here with the drone and may start running away from home. So these are some of the changes in behavior that can uh, be a sign of who the child is and the, uh, ha having some more uh, physical abuse necessarily at home. Okay, so now with that discussed, uh, let us now look at emotional abuse. Emotional abuse uh, indicators or signs May include, uh, may include a lot of things uh, from neurotic behavior, being unable to play, and uh, fear of uh, making mistakes. But it is important that you know that emotional abuse can be difficult to measure as there are often no outward physical signs. There may be a developmental delay due to failure to thrive and grow, although this will usually only be evident if the child puts on uh, weight in other circumstances. For example, when hospitalized or away from their parents' care, even so, children who appear well cared for may nevertheless be emotionally abused by being taunted, uh, put down, or belittled. They may receive little or no love, affection, or attention from their parents or carers. Emotional abuse can also uh, take uh, the form of children not being allowed to mix or play with the other children. Okay, so for this part, necessarily what I can advise is that um, we learn from mistakes and uh, parents try by all means uh, to safeguard their children so that they don't make certain mistakes. The children will play with anyone. So as they are playing with uh, some of these of their children, they will learn about those negative things and then they will start avoiding to play with the, those children they feel they are abusive. So children who learn from mistakes, okay? So mistakes necessarily are lessons of life. So emotional abuse, here we are saying, don't refuse a child to play with it. any person that you feel comfortable with within the environment and necessarily where you can protect. Of course, that protection of who they play with needs to come in. 
What are some of the changes in behavior which can indicate emotional abuse? So the changes in behavior may include uh, neurotic behavior, okay, like um, hair twisting or rocking. Uh, it may include a fear of making mistakes, sad, uh, sudden speech disorders, self-harm, fear of parents being approached uh, regarding their behaviors, or developmental delay in terms of emotional progress. So these are some of the changes in behavior that may indicate emotional abuse. Please uh, remember that um, some of these things can be seen also in children that have not been emotionally abused. But if it all seem obvious that they have a lot of uh, these signs, then um, it is important uh, to have uh, the matter tabled with people that can provide counseling in order to reduce uh, the emotional abuse within the child. Then uh, some of the signs that necessarily that can uh, indicate sexual abuse can be vast from uh, abdominal pains, uh, the issue of pregnancy coming up in a child, uh, or sexually transmitted diseases. So adults who use uh, children to meet their own sexual needs abuse both girls and boys of all ages including infants and toddlers. Usually in cases of sexual abuse, it is the child's behavior that may cause you to become concerned. Although physical signs can also be present, okay, so that is, physical signs can also be present within uh, this sexual abuse. In all cases, children who tell about sexual abuse do so because they want it to be stopped. It is important, therefore, that they are listened to and taken seriously. So, there are also physical signs that can be seen in children that are being sexually abused. So, some of these uh, uh, signs may include pain or itching in the genital area, bruising or bleeding near genital area, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, vaginal discharge or infection, abdominal pains, discomfort when walking or sitting down, and uh, most likely the issue of pregnancy can be seen if the child has reached uh, the puberty stage. Okay, so other changes in behavior which can also indicate sexual abuse include sudden or unexplained changes in behavior that is becoming aggressive or withdrawn, fear of being left uh, with a specific person or group of people, having uh, nightmares, uh, learning away from home, or necessarily the child may show sexual knowledge which is beyond their age or developmental level. Other signs of sexual abuse may include uh, sexual drawings or language, bedwetting, eating problems such as overeating or anorexia. Uh, and other signs and symptoms may include substance or drug abuse or the child suddenly having unexplained sources of money or not allowed to have friends, particularly in adolescence, or acting in a sexually explicit way towards adults. Okay, then um, under neglect, there are also other signs that can be seen uh, to show that there is abuse. Neglect can be a difficult form of abuse uh, to recognize, yet it has uh, some most lasting and damaging effects on uh, children. The physical signs of uh, neglect uh, may include uh, constant hunger, sometimes uh, stealing food from other children, or it may be constantly uh, dirty or the child is smelling. There can be loss of weight or being constantly underweight or it can be inappropriate clothing for children. Some of the changes in behavior which can also indicate neglect may include um, a complaint from the child that they are tired all the time or not requesting medical assistance or failure to attend to appointments. Other signs of uh, neglect may include having few friends or mentioning being left alone or unsupervised. So this is necessarily seen in children who have been neglected. Okay, then for bullying, necessarily as uh, 
one of um, uh, forms of child abuse. Uh, here, some of the signs that can be seen is that bullying is not always easy to recognize as it can uh, take a number of forms. A child may encounter bullying attacks that are physical, verbal, or emotional. So for physical, pushing, kicking, hitting, it's important to see all the signs of physical abuse within the child. For verbal, that is name-calling, name sarcasm, spreading rumors, and the likes, you might see the child being withdrawn or showing signs of emotional abuse. Okay, then for emotional, including sending or uh, that is tormenting or dedicating or humiliating the child, the child necessarily may become withdrawn. But otherwise, persistent bullying, the results that can be seen in terms of signs may be depression, low self esteem, shyness, poor academic achievement, isolation, threatened or attempted suicide. Okay, so it is important that to note all these things because this time we are having children as young as nine years committing suicide, as young as six years committing suicide because uh, people out there or caretakers out there, they don't note uh, these signs of abuse in children. So the child may end up being frustrated and not seeing a solution to their problem. So some of the signs uh, of bullying that uh, may be seen that the child is bullying may be coming home with cuts and uh, bruises. Uh, they may come home with torn clothes or buttons. And for buttons here, I will really make a lot of emphasis. When you see a child, most of the time, he comes with the buttons removed from their shirts, buttons moved from their shirts. It's likely there's a bully who's pulling them on their shirts and the, these buttons are falling. So it's better you follow up uh, the matter and they see that he, your child is not bullying or that child is not being bullied. So asking for stolen possessions to be repressed or losing dinner, money, can also be a sign of bullying. We have children that go to school. Every time they come back from school, they are complaining of hunger, yet you packed food for them. It's likely there is a bully who is taking food from them, and they are eating the food. And then this child stays without eating. Bullying also takes in the form where the child is eating and then another person without proper permission comes to eat with this child and the child feels, oh, I'll be more safe if I allow this person to eat. Then at, at the end, the child is not satisfied, the bully gets uh, the bigger share. So being moody and bad-tempered can be a sign of uh, bullying and child and children or, child or children that are being bullied. Wanting to avoid leaving their home or wanting to just be at home, not going to school, can be also a sign to pick. The child was interested in school and all of a sudden they are no longer interested in going to school. It's important as a parent or caretaker to find out more as to what is necessarily causing this. So doing less or well at school also can be one of those signs as to maybe the child being bullied or feeling emotionally abused. So children who have been bullied also have sleep problems, they have also anxiety issues, and most of the time they become quiet and withdrawn. Okay, so uh, with all these uh, signs of uh, bullying that we have discussed and the types of uh, bullying that we have discussed, we can say the definitions and indicators that we have discussed within this are not definitive, but only can serve as a guide to assist you as a person taking care of children so that you can know those children that have been abused. It is important too to note that and remember that many children may exhibit some of these indicators at some time and uh, the presence of one or more should be taken as proof that abuse is, or is occurring within this child. There may be well be other reasons for changes in behavior such as a birth or birth of a new baby in the family or relationship problems between parents and carers. Okay, so in assessing whether indicators are related to abuse or not, the authorities will always want to understand them in relation to the child's development and extent. You know, when, a new when there is a child who has been born in the family, parents necessarily tend to 
give less attention to other children. So the, the, the other child now will start to feel withdrawn and um, feel neglected. So parents need to be aware that in, when there's a new child, uh, these uh, such things can happen so that they give the necessary care that they have been giving to the child so that the child does not feel neglected. So there you have it. Uh, today we have been looking at uh, uh, child abuse. We have looked at types of child abuse and some of the indicators of the child who's been abused under different types of child abuse. So from me, I'm saying uh, keep uh, studying.